I am switching to my virtual machine and let's clear the screen. And let's first copy everything from the NX directory. So I'm just copying from NX and I'm just copying everything here. As you can see, we have the vulnerable binary, the vulnerable program, and we have the previously written exploit along with the make file. All right, so we have pretty much everything we have. Now, before we proceed further, let's go back to the slides once again. And let's remind ourselves that ASLR must be turned off for this exploit. So let's turn off ASLR. The reason we are turning off ASLR is we are dealing with how to bypass NX in this lecture. In a later lecture, we will discuss how to bypass both NX and ASLR in one exploit. Right. So let's only focus on NX in this lecture. So I'm just going back to ASLR directory and let's type disable ASLR.sh. So this script is going to disable ASLR for us. Let's also quickly verify if ASLR is disabled. As you can see, ASLR is disabled here. Now let's once again navigate to return to libc directory. Now let's start writing the exploit. Let's load the vulnerable binary using GDB. And let's set up a breakpoint at main and let's run it. As mentioned earlier, there are a few things that we want to do here. We want to find out the address of the system function and then we want to find out the address of exit function followed by the address of bin sh. To find out the address of the system function, we can simply type P space system. So this is going to be the address of system function from libc. I'm just copying it here and let's paste it in a notepad. Remember, this is the absolute address. We don't have to add it to the libc base. Now there is another way to get the same, which is x info system. This output also shows the same address which is ending with 1b410 here. So getting the address of system function from libc is as easy as that. All right, we are done with finding out the address of the system function. The next one is to find out the address of exit. We can find it the same way we found the address of system function. So let's type p space exit. Here it is. This is the address of exit function. So let's copy this and let's paste it here in our notes. Now we have gotten the address of system as well as exit. Now it's time to get the address of bin sh from libc. There are few ways to do this. The easiest way to find out the address of bin sh string is to use strings command. So let's open up a new tab and let's first make sure that we have libc library available within our working directory. So I'm just grabbing the libc library from here. I'm just copying the location of libc library and let's copy that into the current directory. Now we have libc in the current directory. Now we can run strings command against this libc library to find out the offset of bin sh string. So before that, let's quickly take a look at the help options with strings command. Let's take a quick look at the help. We are going to scan the entire file so we can use dash a for that. We want the address to be printed in hex format that can be specified using dash t space x 
which is going to give us the location of the string in base 16. So let's type, let me first clear the screen and let's type strings dash a dash t space x and let's provide the input file which is the libc library and let's pipe the output and grep for bin sh string. There it is. If you notice, we got the offset that we wanted. So let's copy this. We need to add this offset to the libc base address. So let's first paste this in our notepad. This is bin sh offset. Okay, now we need to have the base address of libc so that we can add this offset to that base address and we can get the absolute address of bin sh string in libc library. So I'm switching back to my virtual machine and let's take a look at the output of vmmap command once again. And if you notice, this is the base address of libc. So let's copy this and let's paste it here libc base. There is another way to get this bin sh address from libc that is by using wrapper. So let's go back to the virtual machine and type wrapper and let's quickly take a look at the help options. If you look at this we can load the file by using dash f and we can actually specify dash dash string option which will actually look for the string in all data sections. So let's use this option and see if we can find out the bin sh offset. So I'm clearing the screen and I'm typing wrapper dash dash file libc. This is where we want to search for the bin sh string and let's specify the string slash bin slash sh. Look at that. We have gotten the offset once again. Let's quickly copy this and let's check if it is the same value that we have gotten earlier using strings command. Yes, it is. These two offsets are the same. So this is another way of getting string offsets from libc. All right, now we have gotten pretty much everything that we wanted except for the gadget that pops a value into the register RDI. So let's use wrapper to find it out. I'm switching back to my virtual machine once again and I'm typing wrapper and let's load libc library. Now the file is loaded, we can search for our gadgets. Search space slash one slash Let's type pop RDI because this is the instruction we want in the gadget. So let's hit enter. And if you look at this, we have gotten a gadget here with this offset. I'm going to pick this gadget for now. I'm going to explain how to pick a specific gadget later when we learn return oriented programming. But for now, just remember the gadget has to end with the red instruction. So I'm just copying this offset and I'm just placing it here once again. And remember, this is also an offset. So to get the actual address of this gadget, we will have to add this to libc base. So now we got everything we needed to start writing our exploit. So let's switch to our virtual machine and start writing this exploit.